We have already discussed the organizational structure of the Busan Port Authority and the functional divisions established under the President of the Port Authority. The Port Commissions, which is the highest decision-making body of the Busan Port Authority, comprises of seven members, a chairperson and the six commissioners. The port commission is responsible for deliberating and deciding on key issues and recommending people for memberships to the port authority, recommendation of the executive members of the Port Authority. Objectives of the Busan Port Authority are to enhance port management efficiency, to increase trade volume, to develop an efficient port expansion plan, and to balance the development of the port and the Busan city. This picture shows the Busan New Port Development Project from 1995 to 2021. Building 40 container berths and 5 general cargo berths over a draft of 17 meters with a total budget of 16.5 7 billion US dollars. Along with the Busan New Port project, the Busan Port District Park, a logistics park with a free trade zone, has been implemented to develop port centric logistics activities with uh, lucrative. Uh, incentives and uh, tax benefits. The need for and uh, presence of a port authority can be argued in many ways. Do we actually need the sort of a port authority that exists today? If not, why not privatize them wholesale by offering them to the highest bidder. The public sector justifies that the governments of the Port Authority with respect to property rights. The need for planning the significance of public goods dealing with externalities and promoting efficiency. Looking at the property lines, many areas of water are covered by legal or customary rights of free navigation and fishing. Those who simply put up a port structure extending into the water generally have no legal right to the sea bottom upon which it was founded, nor to the water columns through which it passes. Therefore, legal security is required for the construction of port facilities in the form of property rights. Seaports are unusual in that they generally involve structures extending from the land into the water. Statutory powers may well be needed by dredging a new channel. Planning uh, permissions may also be needed from uh, local government authorities. The need to plan requires the critical task that need specialized expertise, such as dredging, 
accurate forecasting and managing interactions with external factors such as safety and pollution due to the nature of public goods and services such as street right and defense where the public bears the cost irrespective of uses ports must consider the public interest port business and the related activities result in numerous consequences such as pollution congestion safety issue visual intrusion and so on these consequences that requires the proper management for the good of the public in order to uh, in order to promote efficiency the principal means of uh, doing so will be through competition not through the direct management of the port facilities therefore the port authority must be ensured that there is a fair competition without cartels, merges, and other forces. On the other hand, there are arguments against the public sector governing port authority. First, a public body established and appointed by some level of government is a uh, bureaucracy is with uh, all of its uh, disadvantages. Next, to its own survival, the main objective of uh, such a uh, body is uh, to expand. However, there are uh, diseconomized in having essentialist uh, unrelated activities that carried on within the same organization. Furthermore, most official bodies that serve special functions, meaning that they are not subject to the ordinary rules of the market. Their ability to make profits cues stems from a combination of this Monopolitic, monopolitic positions. Finally, most port authorities are unable to justify their structure of port charges. Some other common issues related to public sector entities, such as monumental syndrome, diffusion of responsibilities, corruption, merely the following rules and regulatory captures are also applicable for port authority governed by the public sector. The next case study is on the Busan Port Hinterland Complex, which we discussed the previous list under the Busan New Port Development Project. As port begins the performing more duties and start to provide the added value services, they can be expanded to create hinterland complexes, which have both direct and indirect relations relations with ports. A supply chain that connects the supply of raw materials to the sales of goods must be established. In order to build a low-cost production networks or production base, ports have never been more important in this matter. Therefore, a platform is a place in and around the ports for all international transactions, 
such as uh, procurement, production, sales and uh, consumption. The Busan New Port District Park provided uh, tax intensive and uh, benefits uh, to investors uh, to provide uh, value added uh, services uh, utilizing the available hinterland. We can observe potential effects of the hinterland complex by looking at similar projects in other ports, such as the Jabal Ali Free Zones in Dubai, which houses 6,400 businesses from 120 countries, creating 160,000 jobs. Another example is the Rotterdam Port Hinterland, which houses approximately 3,000 businesses, creating added value. Developing the Busan Port Hinterland Complex has many ripple effects throughout the local economy, including sparking around 5.3 trillion Korean currency worth of production and around 2.2 trillion Korean currency worth of added value and creating about 40,000 jobs. In short, port hinterland complexes must be created as a port developer. They create cargo volume and the port added values, and they strengthen port competitiveness. As port perform their duties and start to provide added value services, the necessary necessity of port hinterland complexes increases. Hinterland complexes have direct and indirect relations with ports because they expand them. Those who use the port consider not only the port's capacities to handle cargo, but also the diversity and the possibility of added value that they provide as an important factor in choosing which port to use. To sum up the topic discussed, let's look at a couple of case studies from Korea. First up is the Korean Port Development Master Plan background and the history. The central government establishes a master plan every 10 years to develop its port efficiency. The central government then reviews the plan's potential revisions every five years. The government read master plan prevents the overlapping investment that originates from the excessive and irrational desire for development. And too much is the competition among domestic ports. The government read the balanced port development helps to improve competitiveness of national ports and logistics industries. With the establishment of the master plan, competitiveness increasing along with the timely expansion of port infrastructure and it was possible to achieve external price competitiveness of import and export through reduced cost and 
port congestions. To summarize the further, the establishment of the port master plan supported increased the trade volume of imports and exports and has the ports prepared for a chronic lack of port facilities and increasing demands. The master plan is vital to attract private capital for port development and diversity. However, government-led port development is necessary as it is difficult to achieve timely development and higher security of port facilities using only private entities. But it is difficult for the central government to consider the special coordinate special conditions and potentials of each port with the master plan. It is the third section of this presentation and I'm going to introduce the future trend of the global shipping and port industry. More specifically, the increasingly important role of ports in the supply chain management. Ports are getting bigger as vessels are getting larger. The growing importance of port security after September 11, 2001. Reshaping features of today's ports and port redevelopments to strength functions, qualitative transformation, and expanding urban function. Around 87% of global imports and export products move through the sea. Therefore, the role of shipping lines and ports have been recognized as the key players within the international trade. However, the main functions of ports has been limited within warehousing and as a node for a multimodal transport system. Have you ever heard of port-centric logistics? Port-centric logistics describes the positioning of logistics and the distribution services when goods arrive. It is considered as an alternative to inland depot and centrally located national distribution centers. It is allow you to store your shipment at the port itself and decrease the number of handling stages throughout your storage and distribution processes, saving time and money. <clears throat> port centric logistics is increasingly being considered as a way for business to streamline their supply chains and reduce their impact on the environment. For many organizations, port-centric logistics aims to remove unnecessary freight miles. It is understood that ports are a critical place to increase value-added activities in the whole supply chain. <clears throat> this slide shows how the size of container ships have increased in the last 30 years. Since the Musk, the biggest container shipping line in the world, introduced a 7,400 TEU container in the mid-1990s. 
container size in 2020 have tripled and 22,000 TU container ship is quite normal. Due to the economies of scale, shipping lines will deploy larger vessels to save money through the reduction of unit cost per TU. <clears throat> However, it also generates higher cost in other parts of the supply chain. <clears throat> For example, container ports need to provide deep water, longer berths, and the larger cranes to facilitate bigger vessels. Shipping lines are the main customers for ports. Port fallings to attract larger ships will lag among the local and the regional competitors. <clears throat> Since September 11, 2001, strong and strict regulations of port security have been introduced by the U.S. government, which including CTPAT in 2001, 24 hours rules and container security initiative in 2002, ISPS code in 2004, SFI and MI in 2006. Countries and the ports who wish to trade with the USA must follow these security regulations. These are some photos which shows the selected maritime instance occurring since the 1960s. Awareness has been raised globally for the maritime sectors to be sustainable or green. The International Maritime Organization has ruled that from 1st January 2020, marine sector emissions in international water be slashed. The marine sector will have to reduce the sulfur emissions by over 80% by switching to lower sulfur fuels. The IMO also announced that, that it will impl implement stronger regulations than before from 2030. How should port prepare these regulations. The Korean government has set up basic plan to build a green port, which is efficient in energy consumption and low in carbon emissions by using new and renewable energy sources. For this, we set up the objective of 30% reduction compared to business as usual in 2020. In addition, the Korean government created five emission control areas, which began controlling vessels' emissions strictly, strictly in Korean ports from September 2020. The future of a port will be their economic responsibilities to lead nations both nationally and internationally. Improvement in seaport need to be made economic functions as increasing the producers surplus of export, increasing the consumers surplus of imports. The measure of the economic efficiency of a port is the 
aggregate cost of handling cargo through it. The port redevelopment project in Korea was initiated for the following two reasons. Firstly, the life cycle of ports and their function support facilities are short. Due to changes in the logistics environment, such as the growth of ports and the cities behind them, the growth of ships and cargo containers. As a result, the number of port facilities with functional decline is increasing and proper functional uh, convergence is necessary for these ports. Secondly, the demand for recreation and leisure spaces among the public has been increasing in port cities due to the growth of income and the spread of the five-day work week. As the demand for present the environment space increases, the demand for uh, redevelopment is increasing for existing old or ideal ports in Korea. This photo is a bird eye view of the Busan North Port Redevelopment, which will be completed by year 2030. The main purpose is of the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project is to provide a waterfront space to citizens by converting the functions of the old port. Let's watch a short video clip of the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project. There is a city made of light. There is a future opened with waterways. There is a place where people become one with harmony. Central Bay, the project for harmony between light, water and people. The Fuzan North Port Redevelopment Project. From now on, the future of Busan will be changed completely. Being the largest port city in Korea, Busan has had its image as a major industrial city where logistics and shipping are the most important elements in the local economy. Now, Busan will be reborn as a maritime capital of Korea through the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project. Nearly $7,700 million will be invested in the 1.52 million square meters of the project site, covering Jungu and Donggu. The project is to be completed by 2020. The Busan North Port Redevelopment Project will reconstruct the old Busan into a new city of maritime and culture in the basis of functions of its original urban area and to be reborn as an international hub of tourism by building a great water-friendly environment with eco-friendly technologies. Taking advantage of Korea's geographical feature surrounded by the sea on the three sides. The goal of the project is to transform Busan into the number one maritime hub city in the world. For Busan citizens, it will boost their confidence and offer spacious places to enjoy maritime culture. For the nation, it will serve as a momentum for upgrading national prestige as a gateway to Eurasia. To make Korea a global hub for maritime culture, the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project set clear goals as follows. Firstly, recreating the function of the existing urban area which once led the development of the entire Busan. 
Beyond its conventional role as a center of industry and logistics, Busan will be redeveloped to perform higher value-added functions as a hub for maritime tourism and culture. Secondly, constructing an eco-friendly waterfront for citizens. Busan will become an eco-friendly maritime city where spacious green zones, a landmark island, and a scenic waterfront are located in harmony and citizens can enjoy various activities. Thirdly, promoting Busan as an international hub for maritime tourism. Busan will be transformed into an international tourist attraction and a maritime cultural mecca where travelers can enjoy beautiful spectacles and diverse amusements. Busan North Port will be renovated as a landmark of Busan. The island is a trademark of North Port where light, water and people become one in harmony. In the maritime culture zone, surrounded by waterways, a landmark tower and an art center will be placed with all sorts of city functions available. The light of tunnel and the light of waterway will become popular sites of North Port, where high technologies and the beauty of nature are represented together. In addition, newly decorated boulevards in Chungjangro and several theme parks will provide places for rest and relaxation in the city. Busan North Port will be transformed into a multifunctional maritime city where Busan only has in Korea. With the goal of becoming the most competitive place in the 21st century of harbor renaissance, the port is to equip harbor complex zone with an international passenger terminal and a bay cruise terminal connecting land and sea. The zone will show a highly developed form of future port by serving various commercial, lodging and business functions as well as basic port needs. In the meanwhile, the existing facilities will be renovated for maritime culture. For example, the existing coastal ferry terminal is to be maintained to be used as an excursion ship terminal. The international passenger terminal site will be refurbished into the maritime center. There are sensuous themes in Busan North Port. Culture complex is to be constructed to take a lead in operating future business of Busan. IT image exhibition zone will be located in the rear of the project area nearby Chungjongro to continuously promote the cultural heritage of Busan, including Busan International Film Festival. Various cultural centers and leisure complex for exhibition, business and shopping are planned to become a mecca for the future industry of Busan. In addition, commerce and business zone with the financial center and brand shops and city complex zone focusing on city life functions with facilities like hotels, condominiums, dwellings, medical centers and restaurants will be built to provide various contents and additional services. There is pleasant communication in Busan North Port. Busan North Port plans to locate the transit transfer center in the low height area of the city, a fine view of the sea from Busan Station. Such structure allows a clear view for both the new city of North Port and the Sea of Busan. In addition, the Chungangro pathway will be constructed a wide esplanade to link Busan Station to the landmark in Maritime Culture Zone so that it will enhance the visitor's accessibility. Moreover, the Transit Transfer Center directly connected with Busan Station will provide easier access to North Port for citizens using various transportation systems. The city of Busan cannot exist without the sea and harbors. This fact is why Busan is eager to develop maritime business and culture. Such important mission can be successfully performed through the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project. Busan North Port will be redeveloped into a distinguished multi-entertainment zone where commercial areas and water-friendly spaces coexist in harmony. Once the project is complete, it is expected to generate a ripple effect 
of $24,160,000,000 on the local economy and to create 120,000 jobs, allowing a great opportunity for Busan to become a world-famous waterfront where the cultural industry flourishes. This redevelopment project will not only change the geographic map of Busan, but also transform the entire Busan into a global hub for commerce and trade. Moreover, this project will boost confidence of Busan citizens with a picturesque harbor and attract many tourists from all over the world. It will provide the great opportunity to achieve the status as a maritime country with a high value-added economy. Busan Central Bay, the future of Busan and the pride of the maritime capital of Korea. It will be successfully promoted by the BPA in cooperation with the Korean government and Busan Metropolitan City.